My VSO told me that I should not file my BDD program because I will have more control of my VA disability when I get out within a 12 month period. I'm not sure why a VSO would advise that. Most VSOs I know would absolutely encourage you to do a BDD. My concern with somebody not doing a BDD is that once they separate, that, that transition process of doing a claim it, is gonna keep being on a back burner. Right now, there are some people, they may relocate or there may be certain circumstances where I may say, okay, I got it. You'll get it when you get to your home or record or home or station and stuff like that. My concern is if they wait to do a claim until after they get out, then they're going to keep putting it off. Open rank. On. So I'm looking online, I'm reading all these posts, looking at questions that ask like, what is the BDD program? What is the BDD process? Why do I need to do it? Why do I need to fill it out? My VSO told me that I should not do it. I missed the window. Today, we're going to get rid of all those questions. I have brought to the channel Tyrone Hewitt. He is a transition, military transition specialist. So we're going to jump right into it. Tyrone, before we start, I want to ask you one quick question. What is the impact of the check the box mentality. What is the impact of the check the box mentality from a service member's perspective and also from a transitional specialist perspective? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, it's definitely an honor. What, what I would say is what I see in unfortunately many cases is as a service member is getting ready to transition out, uh, whether or not they may be junior, they may be senior, they kind of see kind of like the end goal, right? They see that light. And in very many cases, it may be get your leave chit or your DD-214 or whatever the case may be. You got to check all these blocks, right? In the transition process, it's kind of part of that. The classes, the sheets, and all of these things um, that we have to accomplish. And sometimes what I see is the individual is so quick to just want to kind of get that check in the block done that they're not taking the time to fully either research or embed themselves in the transition process as far as maybe writing a resume or taking classes and things of these other things of this other nature. And by the time they officially get out, they look back and say, I rushed the process just to get what I needed to done to get out. Um, mm. So they're actually sometimes working backwards, right? Learning about their BA, learning about jobs and things of that nature. So I usually find that that check in the block mentality is, is usually harmful because they just it puts them in a rushed, hurry, 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 let me get this done so I can be so I can get my paperwork and get out. Right. And that can have an impact on them in the future. 100%. Down the road. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, that's good. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. Everything that we do in a transition process, it affects the future, right? How well is your resume written? How well have you documented your VA stuff, right? How well have you networked? Um, how, you know, and depending on what process you're in, what tier group you're in, you may have to have a budget. How, how quickly did you really you know, um, organize your finances. And then when you're out, it could be the day afterwards, it could be six months later, you look back and say, oh man, you know what? I rushed that. Now they're, now they're trying to play catch up. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for that because I wanted to set the tone because obviously we're talking to individuals who are transitioning. The goal of this particular episode is to give you the mindset, the appropriate mindset for how to approach the transition process from a VA disability BDD perspective. And so with that, Tyrone, I want you to just kind of walk us through, like, just give us a little bit about who you are, how, what is your mission? How did you get into the program? And then we'll dive into some more questions. Yeah, absolutely. So I work as a transition counselor, right? And so my, my overall mission or I would say even our overall wish and mission is to educate the service member and their family, right? A lot of times if you're transitioning out, you know, you should bring your family uh, or you should involve your family, especially if you're married. Um, our overall goal is to educate people. That way they make the best choices that they need to make on their way out, right? You know, because in, in many cases, I do hear people say, I wish I would have known this then. I wish I would have heard about this a year ago. So our goal is just to better educate people on, you know, information resources, opportunity. That way they make the best decision for themselves and their family on the way out, out that front gate. 
Got it. Are you are you attached to a particular unit? A tick. I'm sorry, a particular base. Um, so I, I'm in I'm in Hampton Road. So I traditionally help out several of the, several of the bases in the area. Got you. Got you. Okay. Cool. Cool. So talk to me about what the BDD program is. Give us the high level overview, twenty five thousand <clears> foot <throat> view, and then we're going to land it with some uh, drill down questions. Yeah, absolutely. So many years ago, and I, I can't even tell you when, the, the VA came up with a process to start your VA claim process while you're in. Um, and ideally, and it doesn't always happen, you know, depending on where you're at, and there's a couple other different factors, but ideally you get your VA claim completed or adjudicated within a month or so after you get out, right? So VA said, hey, anywhere between your 90-day um, and your 180-day mark from actually separating, not when you start house hunting, job hunting, leave, not when you start skill bridge, but your last pay day, right? That 90, 180 days from your last pay date from getting out, um, you can start the process, which means you can get with the, uh, an accredited rep who can help you with the claim, right? They will help you submit your records and all the applicable paperwork for your claim, right? That goes to your, your regional office. Um, and then, you know, they'll contact an, uh, uh, a contracted organization to do your compensation pension exams, right, while you're still in. Um, and then once you, once that tail end towards getting out, the only thing you're essentially waiting for is for the VA to come back and say, okay, we have found you service connected with all these things versus, you know, back in the day when you may have filed a claim after you got out and you're waiting four or five, six months, maybe two years. It's a process to help you get both get all those benefits, right? The the veteran health benefits, or even the the, the veteran health benefits, or the veteran benefits, because now you have a service connected rating, anywhere from a non compensated rating at zero percent or a hundred percent compensated. Got you. I got you. Okay, because I remembered, and I want to get into a little bit about your experiences when you transitioned. Matter of fact, let's let's go there. When did okay. you when did you get out? Yeah, absolutely. Good question. So I retired in 2018, uh, May of 2018. Okay. So we retired or well, we got out at the same time. Um, was, was, was the process the same as it is now back then? Yeah. So as far as BDD goes, yeah, the, the process has, has been the same. The timeline is the same. Um, I don't think anything is really, the only thing that's changed maybe from then now is the number of claims that are in the system, but that has, has a lot to do with two things. One pack act, and I think a lot more people are probably knowledgeable about BDD. So they're trying to do it before they officially okay. separate. Okay. Because I, I remembered when, when I went through in 2018, I had to do a separation health assessment. Mm -hmm. But now I understand that they have a 15 page kind of a separation yep. SHA part A, part B yep. process, which I think is yeah. very good. I think that's a very yeah. good process. What are your thoughts on that, on that new, that new system? with the SHA uh, made the change. I, I I like it. I like it for two things. One, it help, kind of helps the VA out with identifying all the issues you may have. But what I really like for the service member and their family is that um, sometimes, we, I'll be honest with you, sometimes people don't even know what they are. I guess, I, I don't like to use the word suffering, but sometimes people don't understand what they're suffering from, right? We've normalized ailments, we've self-medicated, but that, separa that separation health assessment is a really good, it's a checklist or a visual to look at it with yourself or your spouse and say, ankles, elbows, you know, irritable bowel syndrome, all mm -hmm. these things. Then you say, yep, I, I, I'm aware of this. I've been seen for it. Or on the flip side, oh, wow, you know what? It's asking me about my elbow. Or no, I, I won't even say that. Oh, it's asking me about, you know, stomach issues. You know, I didn't even know I could claim stomach issues because there are a lot of things that people don't even realize they can claim. Right. So at that point, you may circle it. You may put a check mark and say, you know, I have heartburn. I have irritable bowel syndrome several times a week, several times a month. And it must be a disability and I haven't been seen for it. Let me go back to my medical treatment facility or my military treatment facility and let them know. I say, hey, you know, I was kind of thinking about it. I'm always suffering from this issue. I'd like to get, you know, checked out or whatever, and how that process is going to work. But I, I like that checklist because it gives you a really good starting point on, you know, things that the VA considers, you know, yeah, connections. Yeah. So I'm going to take you back to 2018. 
you you dropped your paperwork to get out. You're going through the process, the BDD process. Talk to me about some of the fears, anxieties, and what you did um, to kind of walk through and organize your medical story. Yeah. Um, so in our area, the state, so every every state has their own veteran um, organization, veteran rep. So we're lucky in our area, they have VSOs that come in and talk to us. It, and this is an addition to TAP. This is not just a regular TAP. This is another class mm. that they do at the service center, um, a couple of our service centers. They have a rep that talks you through that whole VA disability process, right? What service connection is, what service connection isn't, all the things that they will cover, um, and kind of how to understand that process. So once I took that class and I got all the information, one of the things that I personally did was I, I, I got my own records. I got my paper record. I went to medical and had them send me um, my Alta, downloaded the PDF, and I went through my record and kind of highlighted everything, my paper record and things, you know, pain, joint, mm -hmm. limited movement. And then I used, I went through my electronic record on my PDF. I did a control F on a whole bunch of things. And I just piled everything um, by ailment, right? So the very first time I had an issue with my back was in boot camp, right? That was in my record. Mm. All the way to the last chiropractic visit I had in 2017. And everything in between kind of told a story back pain here, adjustment here. And then I did the same thing with my shoulder and my neck and everything else that I had. And I had piles. I remember being in my living room. I had piles of ailments. And the idea was to make the, the cause you want to tell your story, mm. right? Mm -hmm. um, the idea was to, to make the story easy for my VSO when they helped me submit all my paperwork it was going to be easy for the um, compensation pension examiner because and it was in chronological order, right? So they can say, okay, starting from 98 to 2017 or whatever. And then it was easy for the rater. That way they're not going through hundreds, if not thousands of pages, trying to, trying to build a puzzle. I, 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 put, I put all the puzzle pieces together for them um, to make it easier, right? And, and I think, and I'm going to be honest with you, I think one of the issues I think sometimes service members have is they don't believe they they may be suffering something, suffering from something, or they may have a, a, a disability. But when I looked at my own piles, I was like, oh my goodness. Hmm. You know, you know, I've I've been to medical for, I can't tell you how many times about my ankle. Like that, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. So it it did make me realize that, oh, I, I do have some things that I yeah, yeah, you know, that I have issues with. When you talked to uh, talked about the the process of going through getting your medical records, do you advise that it's good to sit down with a family member, in some cases the significant other, like in my case, my wife, yeah. and really walk through this process together? Yeah. Uh, what yeah. advice no, that's can you good. give us? Yeah, that's good. I think, you know, kind of like I said earlier, sometimes we normalize or we self-medicate, right? So a, a person, what I sometimes tell people is, it's one thing to have the have a bad day, right? Maybe maybe you wake up and you're you're just kind of feeling down. You're in in no way am I a VSO or a mental health clinician, mm -hmm. but you may work, you may wake up and you may you may feel down or maybe sad, or, you know. But it's one thing to for it to continue to happen. It's another thing if it if maybe affects other people. So if you're talking about maybe mental health with a spouse, they may say, you know, you 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 definitely you know, sometimes you're irritable or quite often you're irritable and you have loss of hunger and you can't sleep, you know, or they may talk to you about some stuff. They may say, you know, you used to love walking the dog around the block, but now you always complain about your ankle or, hey, you know, you always talk about having a headache, right? Mm. And this is a headache beyond being dehydrated or tired or stressed. So they're giving you kind of reminders, but in our minds, we've normalized it. Maybe we... You know, we take motion for a headache or we buy it. We go to Walmart, we buy our own ankle brace. Hmm. And during that time, we don't think we have any issues. But somebody from the outside looking in and says they may say, no, absolutely. This yeah. is these are reoccurring right. or there's a chronicity or chronic issue. Hmm. And then you're like, I need to get seen and, and all these other things. So, yeah, doing it by yourself, yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're looking at the situation in the tunnel. I, I, external people are like, no, you have you have some problems.
what I've often heard heard people say is, "I'm getting older," you know, and, and I'm like, yeah. "You're 25." <laughs> like daily back pain at 25, that is not normal. That's not normal. Daily pain is not normal. Period. Right, right, right. I get it. If you work in a yard and your back is sore, I got it. Yeah. If yeah. you normally run a mile and a half, two miles, and you want to push yourself and you ran three or four, I got it. Right. But if you're at a point where Bengay and Motrin and the brace and all these things are part of your daily uniform, that ain't normal. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's, that's not normal. And I think I think the other aspect of what could be good advice is when we sit down and we look at the SHA, um, yeah. it, you know, I think you mentioned before in our previous conversations that it'd be good to sit down with your wife or a significant other or a family member and have them walk through it with you and ask them the questions. Because sometimes as, oh, that's as, good. as service members, we may, nah, I don't have that problem. Yes, you do. Yep. Nah, I don't get yep. angry. Nah, yes, you do. <laughs> right? Yep, yep, yep. No, that's good. My VSO told me that I should not file my BDD program because I will have more control of my VA disability when I get out within a 12-month period. What do you think about that? I'm not sure why, you know, a VSO would advise that. Um, most VSOs I know would absolutely encourage you to do a BDD. You know, it's a streamlined process. And, and this, is what I will, this is what I will say is during the transition process, because I'll have individuals ask me if they should do a, a, a BDD, and I'll tell them, you know, I would encourage it, get with the VSO, and there's ways to find accredited VSOs and things of this nature. But within, a tra with, within the process of transitioning out of the military, you know, there's a, you know, we talked about the check on the block earlier. There are a number of things that people could or should be doing, right? My concern with somebody not doing a BDD is that once they separate, that, that transition process of doing a claim it, is gonna keep being on a back burner, right? Now, there are some people, they may relocate or there may be certain circumstances or I may say, okay, I got it. You'll get it when you get to your home or record or home station and stuff like that. But my concern is if a person doesn't wanna file a claim, um, especially if they have all the, all the documentation and everything that they should have, my concern is if they wait to do a claim until after they get out, then they're gonna keep putting it off because they're out of that transition mentality. Mm -hmm. They'll get out in January. They'll be like, you know what? Let me enroll in school, find a job, and I'll find my claim in March. And then March comes. They're like, well, it's spring break. And, you know, I got this going on. I'm going to do it in July. And then it's the summer. And then they're on vacation. And then next thing you know, it's January again. And they've gone mm -hmm. by a year, and they still have never filed their claim because they're because they keep putting a back burner, and they're out of that, let me do all my transition stuff before I get out. Yeah. And I mean, you know, putting ourselves back in that situation, right? It, it is it is a very weird scenario, right? Like you you are in the military one day and in the mil next you're not, right? You have <laughs> yeah. a bunch of different things going on, right? I got to maybe move. I got to find my wife and I and kids got to move. The kids got to find a new school. My wife yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, we have yeah, to find yeah. a new house. And then I got to do a resume. And then I have to do this yeah. SFL tap program is for a week and I got, you know, these guys coming and tell me what I should do and what I can do and what all. So I'm getting the fire hose of information and then I need to get a LinkedIn account because I want to make sure I connect with Tyrone. And then I need to make sure that I get um, a resume straight because I never did a resume. I never had to over the past 20 years. And then you're talking to me about this SHA 15 page form that looks like this where you can't really yeah. see it's blurred out 15 yeah. page form that i have to now do i would just when you think about it i'm just like dude i can do it when i get out because all of the youtube influencers are telling me ah you know the va disability you got you got 12 months after you get off active duty just go ahead and file it then so that's the mind and i get I get how difficult it is, but yeah. what I think what you're saying and what I'm trying to communicate is it's, it's vitally important to do it during that time. And this way you're not under the stressors of life that, that yeah. generally does yeah. occur. So with that being said, 
what happens if with given that mindset now what happens if i just actually missed the window the b what is the bdd window first of all yeah no that's good Road rank on oh.